Thank you for tuning in to Elf. So, while in New Orleans, Christina is another artist I met out there. While she currently lives in New Orleans, she's originally from Seattle, Washington. Let me tell you what makes her so amazing. She pulls her inspiration for her artwork from jazz, and she uses a vast array of colors to spread joy and positivity through her pieces. We totally femmed out. Like, girl power for real. <sighs> Check this interview out. And welcome everyone. This is yet another episode of Elle's. I like to call this version Elle's on the Move. Why? Because I am in New Orleans. And let me tell you, while here in New Orleans, I have been bumping into amazing artists. But this girl right here, this woman is wonderful. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm originally from Seattle, but I'm here. I've been here about 15 years now, and I just love it here so much. Obviously, this is my piece in the background. Um, we're in Jackson Square right now, so I'm just really excited and honored to have this interview. So since we're, we do have this piece in the background, I feel like this is probably the most organic place to start. Right. What inspired this piece? Because it's, it's given me so much joy, um, and it's like a party for me, and I love a, a good party, you know? Like a good family party is what I'm getting the vibe of. I know, that's a lie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what you were thinking while you were oh, painting I, it. No, no, I was having a party by myself. Like a one-person party, party by myself, one. yes. Uh, what were you listening to? So basically, I mean, honestly, I love jazz. Okay. Um, I love jazz so much because it doesn't necessarily have words. Um, my favorite person is Miles Davis. Okay. And it's like when I'm listening to the jazz, I get so inspired and I feel like the moment's really represents jazz. Okay. Um, but you know, I didn't want to be typical. Um, I wanted to do something different. Of course, I like large, very large, different pieces. I obviously have the chair to match. And then this is also a New Orleans chair too as well, an antique chair. Yeah. Um, that represents New Orleans. It's well. very heavy, yes. but comfortable, and it's beautiful. I'll take the juice to see, like, the chair itself. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, I love abstract artwork. Um, I love Picasso. Okay. So, I'm definitely humanistic. I love shape and form okay. and color. So, I just feel really motivated. I feel like this is the place I'm in right now. I'm very, very colorful, very happy, uh, very vibrant, you know, because I feel like now I'm rejuvenated and I am ready to move on. Ready to move on. Yes, to be this artist. I'm so inspired right now. It's so funny because before we just started like actually um, doing the interview, we were talking about um, the word artist and, and the weight I guess that it has for us as artists yes. and how hard it is to call yes. yourself an artist when you're not where you envision yourself being. Right. You know, but um, it's a process, don't you think? I do. I feel like sometimes you do what you have to do to get to where you want to be. Um, cause and effect. So I just feel like, you know, I'm always trying to be creative. So no matter what environment I'm in, I always volunteer myself to be the creative spirit of the creative person. So I'm able to incorporate that. Um, but definitely transitioning right now and just decided that, hey, this is my dream. And if this is what I want, this is what I'm going to go for. I choose to do. No, I choose to set my soul on fire. Yes. <laughs> this is fire right here. <laughs> no, this, is, this, is, this is a whole lot of energy. I mean, yes. Actually, this piece. It's probably how like my family and friends would describe me. Yes, I'm very, very abstract too. <laughs> very colorful, abstract. Yes. And I think it's why it gives me so much life. I feel like I love. I feel. I feel like it's, it's calming for me. Yes. <laughs> yes. And could you imagine this on your wall? You no, at home. I can live in a Oh my god. <laughs> and you walk in the room every day, and it's just like this. Uh, no matter thing. what your day was like, yes. you come into just this room of just joy. And it's like all this right now. Nothing is supposed to make that much sense. Yes. I'm supposed to be working for this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love it. I love so, it. So I also so you do this, but you made this bag? I sure did. <laughs> yes, so, I did. And then yesterday she had an entire gene ensemble. Sorry. As an aspiring fashionista, I can't quite call myself one yet. Um, but as an really? aspiring fashionista, I just have to say that her outfit yesterday was on point. She had 
all jeans from head to toe. She played with the colors. It was a crop top, nice tight pants. I think the sneakers were jeans too, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I did my shoes. Yeah. And the head wrap was a jean head wrap. Yes, so, yes, uh, yes, yes. So hopefully she, I can do more jean head wraps and. And then if you look at her Instagram, my Instagram, I IG stalked you a little bit. I was trying to my Instagram. You look at it, this hat has a story on your Instagram because it, it's like, I would call it the adventures of the, of the hat. Of the fedora, is that called a fedora? I guess so. I, I don't know. guess you could call it. I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, it's very fashionista. I have a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what looks good. And this woman right here, got that. <laughs> yeah. so, and it's like, you know, it's almost like I've been infatuated with Jean ever since Sade. Okay. Yeah, and I just thought she was so beautiful, and she had the Jean on, but you it know wasn't what? I didn't see that. And I, I was infatuated with Jean. I said, oh, I love Jean. So, I've, I've wear jeans. I love Jean shirts. I have a whole collection of jeans. So I've literally cut up all of my very old jeans that I've had for over 20 years now. So, and I feel really inspired. And let me let me just tell you about this first though. Like this is actually a skirt um, that I just turned it inside out. Was it a long skirt or was it? No, it's like a little girl skirt. Okay. Yeah, and I just kept this. And I like rugged edges, and I just like things to be very natural and organic. So, oh, and I, you know, I think it's cool the about pockets, the rugged, I like it. the rugged edges. Wait, are these real pockets? Yeah. I don't like pockets. <laughs> I love pockets. pockets. Like so, everything I do has like mini pockets yeah. in it. <laughs> pockets. You know when you're in, you're, you're trying to catch the train, you, you don't want to dig. You got all your money. You got all your money. You got your car. You know, you got all your stuff right there. No, so. and then I like that it's a rugged edge because over time, if it you know, it's like, becomes it just looks like you know part of it. And I love jeans with holes. Like yes. so, all the holes. So you know, like, I love that. That's so neat. That's good. That's good. That's cool. So. I woke up today very inspired. Um, a lot of people are talking about current events, uh, specifically with like, well, the, the president's commentary on, I, I guess, Colin Kaepernick's movement right now. Um, would you say that, because I, I, I don't want to call it noise, but our climate is a very static one in terms of, I feel like there's a lot of tension. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you apply that into your work? I do, I do. I have not done any pieces lately, but that has been something that I have really thought about. And the one reason is that I have a voice, okay, because of black people. So I feel like it directly affects me and my son and how he's raised in this society. So it's a very scary place to know that this is how we even started the movement, saying that we don't feel safe anymore, or black boys are not safe anymore. Because of all the things that people do at once, right? So now I can teach my son how to say, put your hands up, don't move your hands. You know, if a police officer comes to you, you know exactly what to do for fear of his life. Um, so I feel like it directly affects me. I feel like it's a very hostile environment right now. Um, I don't think people really want to talk about it. I think it's an uncomfortable subject, but it's real and it's happening. But in order to, to, to progress, you have to get comfortable operating in this uncomfortable space. We have to have this conversation. Because yes, if not, do. the tension, the static is going to be worse. Right. What happens when you have friction? What comes after friction? Who was paying attention in science class? Fire. Sorry, just real life stuff. Fire happens after friction. Yes. Um, yeah, no, and then I, so I have, I don't have any kids. I have a godson, though. Um, he's also my nephew. Right. And he's five years old, and that's, that's crazy, because that's something I was thinking one day while watching him, is that probably one of the toughest things to be is, you know, a little black boy growing up in America. Right. And then becoming a black man in America. And it doesn't have to be as hard as it is, but it is. And I, and I, I am concerned about like how people are going to treat him, right. how he's going to respond, right. um, how our actions versus theirs, you know, are perceived. You know, absolutely. Passion is now aggression. You know, yes. Um, pain is now anger. Yes. And, and 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 that's not the case, and that's unfair. I feel it. Is. It really is. Um, I was a special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. The majority of my classroom, eighty percent uh, black boys. I was concerned about that, um, and I addressed those issues with it seemingly the Claude Brown 
issue, um, man child in the promised land, where there's these black boys out here and they're raising themselves and they're going to the streets and they're having all of these behavioral issues. But it does seem like there's sort of a conspiracy against not only black boys, but black men. And I definitely brought up the issue. I'm very concerned, you know, like I said before. Um, and so it's to be, it's something that I really thought about talking about or just painting about in my subject matter and my artwork. So just trying to bring it up a little bit. No, definitely. Um, I noticed that back when I used to teach trauma to, to students, I had one of my parents uh, come up, one of my students' parents come up to me and they asked me about my, um, like what I thought about their child. And I, right. you know, started off with, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> right. I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a sociologist. Like, I'm, I'm not qualified to make an assessment, but here's my assessment since you asked. Um, I just felt like the kid was smart. You know, uh, that really smart kid who pays attention um, and then figures it out and then starts doing other stuff because everyone else is like so far behind them. Right. So they try to say that the kid had ADHD. And I'm like, I think he just needs more work. Right, absolutely. Because in my class, when he gets like that, I just make him my assistant and he's focused. Right, right, you know? absolutely. And that was the issue. They, a lot of my children were misdiagnosed. And luckily I was able to test them. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, because they didn't realize they weren't going to get a degree, right? Yeah. At the end of high school, you're going to get a paper and it's going to be blank, right? So they had no idea, you know, they just, and it was really unfortunate. But I think it starts there. That's our foundation. It starts in childhood for young black boys. And so it's our responsibility to take the stand and say, look, I'm going to take them under our wing. I'm going to understand. We're going to all work with them. We're going to come up with some theories and some concepts of how we can make things better. Especially for young black folks. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. So, am I wrong? Did I see that you dance as well? Uh, yes. Uh, I think, you know, when you're in the art world, you just try to do, see, you try to do a little bit of everything, right? But see, I was trying to spang a little bit, but I don't think they like my spang. I was trying to do the same thing. I'm the backup for your backup singer, but you know. I was hitting them with the woo 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 woo. Yeah, I tried, I tried. They were like, ooh. They said, ooh, stick with the canvas and the paint and the dancing. They were like, your act. Yeah, just stay with this. You go here. So I have strong points, you know, but I just think, you know, in the art world, you just you just kind of tap into a little bit of everything. But dance is, it definitely is modern. Yes, and so More that's how I started. More in technique by any chance? Yeah, um, no, just more modern. Okay. And I was really self-taught. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I did get in dance classes later on, like 17, 18 years old. And so I was trained at some point. But um, it's just my passion. I love it. I love music. And that's probably why I think about music all the time. And the music just makes and motivates me to dance. Yeah. So it keeps you healthy and young. And, and it makes sense yeah. because as a painter, if you're moving, you're dancing. Yes, you're and I'm moving. Anyway. And that's why I like it big. So I can just be free of my brush. Yes. The music, wine, oh, hey. party. Hey, the one person party. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes all you need is a party of one. Yes. What? Some it starts, that's where it starts. That's what, exactly. You start the party. So, okay, boom, boom. Let's talk about that. Um, how, I guess, having this party of one, has that helped you to kind of like define who you are and your purpose? Absolutely. Um, I feel like I'm always different, mm -hmm. and I guess most artists feel like they're different, but um, I've always been the one that's been motivated by some things. Um, when you go to the party, no one's on the dance floor. I'm the first one on the dance floor, just all by myself. And then all of a sudden, you got two, three other people. Like, what's your last name? Yes. Are we sisters? Are we yeah, my papa was a Rolling Stone. Yes. So he might so, be. Ooh, okay, so y'all can look at me. Okay. I oh, think we have the same nose anyway. Yes. I, you know what? Your eyes look familiar to me. I'm looking in a mirror. This girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes you have to have that party of one. What, what advice would you give to, you know, the younger generation? Women and men alike, obviously, are Afrocentric ones, the ones right. who are a part of the Black diaspora, the African diaspora. Right. What, what advice would you give them, um, you know, in terms of, like, their growth, finding their growth? So the first thing I would say I just did a one. So the first thing I would say is never give up. Always be inspired. And that's my whole concept with the new beginning. And even if you mess up or something happens, 
always have a chance. It's just that wasn't your path, and it's just moving you to the path that you need to be. So my biggest, um, I love children. I see their little hearts. I see who they are, but I think the biggest thing is peer pressure. And people, I mean, sometimes family members can say, oh, you don't want to do that. Oh, that's stupid. You know, you just have to stay true to who you are and know exactly what you want and just never give up. Never let anyone get hurt. I love that you spoke about vision. I think it's hard. It is would you hard. Say, would you say that uh, once you figure it out, that's it? Or would you say that that's something you constantly have to consistently work on? Right. So, the whole new beginning, it's that concept of I'm working towards this. I tried this. Okay, so I fell here. I didn't get really what I wanted. Now I'm back on the path again. Here I am with another new beginning. But in another, you know, we all were developing, we're growing, we're transforming. Um, so I feel like life is transformation. Do you think it's an artist thing? Um, just the inability to be complacent, like there's always more to strive right. for? I definitely feel it's an artist thing. I think artists are very abstract in our way of thinking. I feel that we're always trying to get to the next level or we're always inspired by something we see or something else and try to make it our own. Um, we're, we, we have a heart and very passionate people, um, very loving people. Know, uh, and I think the energy it, it shows. You know, when a person walks in and they're very arty, I think that energy and kind of gravitate towards that because it is different. You know, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you <laughs> and all of your beauty. Oh, you're beautiful oh, too. Thank you. But no, I mean, like, from your beauty shines from within. Like, you're beautiful on the outside. You have a gorgeous face, obviously. But I'm saying the spirit that glows and shines is so beautiful. And then you just throw it on this is here and I wish it was mine but maybe one day I'll make like seven figures and I'll get to pay you like Fun. 
Um, and then if we can beautiful spirit, right? I love that girl. She's amazing. If you want more information on Miss Christina Mitchell herself, you can follow her on Instagram at New Beginning Art. Again, that's at N E W B E G I N N I N G A R T at New Beginning Art on Instagram. And you already know you can follow me at Lynette Eloise. Ciao.